Colette Evelyn last updated 1925, September 27, 2017 Wellington City Councillors voted to sell and lease the council's land at Shelley Bay to the developers, Shelley Bay Limited. Despite the threat of legal action and advice from its former legal advisor, Wellington City Council is forging ahead with its involvement in the $500 million Shelley Bay project, voting to sell and lease its land to the developers. The vote on Wednesday effectively gives the green light for the start of the development, but Council Chief Executive Kevin Lavery and councillors are already preparing for court, triggering the council to start an independent review of the process and decisions it. The land will now be sold and leased to Shelley Bay Limited SBL of joint venture between the Wellington Company and the Port Nicholson Block Settlement Trust PNBST which has not notified resource consent to redevelop the area on the Miramar Peninsula, with hotels, apartments, townhouses, a rest home, a ferry terminal, a marina and a cable car linked to Mount Crawford. Port Nicholson Block Settlement Trust members, from left, Maury Love, Wayne Mulligan and Peter Jackson attended the Wellington City Council meeting, at which they got the green light to develop Shelley Bay. On Tuesday night, councillors were sent a letter from Sally Dosser, the council's former general counsel, who was deeply concerned about the proposal and offered her personal and professional opinion. Redmore Judicial Review looms as Shelley Bay reaches final hurdle councillors caught unaware by Shelley Bay development rules filmmakers slam Shelley Bay as exclusive community that will cost ratepayers Wellington ratepayers to reap $1.5 million a year from development of Shelley Bay's 16-page letter, obtained by Stuff, said she was concerned that councillors were unaware the project had grown on an exponential scale from what they had been told to expect when Shelley Bay was made a special housing area shot and the open space land was included, based on advice that was wrong in law and fact. Former City Council legal adviser Sally Dosser sent a letter to councillors before the vote, saying she was deeply concerned about the proposal and offering her personal and professional opinion. File photo when the council made the area and Shaw, it did not sign up for a proposal of such a scale that was vastly different from the district plan, she said. The fact that so many issues have arisen during the consultation on the lease and sale should in itself cause councillors to question the robustness and veracity of the resource consent application and the council's decision to grant it. Dosser, the council's director of governance for six years, said councillors could not rely on the processes followed to date with confidence. The $500 million proposed Shelley Bay development would include hotels, apartments, townhouses, a rest home, a ferry terminal, a marina and a cable car linked to Mount Crawford. Councillors had been told that, if they did not sell the land, developers could still go ahead with the project, but she believed they could still change course. I would be very surprised if the council was out of options, as some would have you believe, the council is already on notice that the Miramar Business Improvement District is planning to challenge the Shelley Bay project by issuing judicial review proceedings in relation to the resource consents granted for the development. An artist's impression of the proposed Shelley Bay development. Lavery said the council had been expecting a legal challenge on the resource consent for Shelley Bay, as it was an untested area of law, and it had appointed counsel. Ms. Dosser's letter is helpful in terms of our preparation as it clearly sets out an opposing view, he said. I will be appointing an independent reviewer to provide us with feedback about the process as it relates to our legal and financial obligations and our responsibilities under the Resource Management Act. If that person identifies any changes to be made, you have my commitment that I will make them quickly. Dosser's letter caused concern to a number of councillors, notably Eon of Panet, who changed her yes vote to no in response. Other councillors who voted against the sale of the land were Andy Foster, Simon Wolf, Malcolm Sparrow and David Lee. Most of the other councillors voiced some sort of reservation before voting yes, with some making amendments on road safety, traffic, climate change and capping infrastructure costs to $10 million. PNBST Chairman Wayne Mulligan and members Peter Jackson and Maury Love sat around the table with the councillors during the debate, and one issue that kept coming up was IWI relations and future partnerships on housing. After the meeting Mulligan said it is a key milestone for us, but there is much more work to be done. We need to sit down with council and work through the details. Stuff.